I've been to disaster zones before. Seeing the scale of the devastation, seeing a whole town of just becoming matchsticks, you can't really get over just how many people were affected by this. And that's the reason that I became an engineer in the first place. I wanted to build real things and solve real world problems. The human hand is one of the most complex parts of the human body. And so in trying to design a product that actually replicates the human hand, there's a lot of design challenges. When I first had this type of hand, I thought of this as a piece of plastic on the end of my stump. But then you get this and it just blows that out of the water. Somebody comes along to you and says, I want you to design a boat and in three years time we're going to have a race and it's going to be a huge prize for the boat that wins. What do you do? Where do you start? Engineers in general are, are a mixture of many different character types so you don't just have to be analytical or highly mathematical you have to be able to solve problems. Okay so we need to create a small scale tsunami but how do you do that? What we've created here is a 1 to 50 scale model it's not like a big wave that, that comes in and a big wall of water that, that washes through the town. It's like a fast tide and when you have walls and sea defences, the water comes up against it, overtops that, and then when the sea defences break, then you get a big rush of water coming in. This box might not look very special, but actually it's full of sensors which tell us what the forces are when the tsunami wave hits the sides of the box. From this information, we can find out how we might design buildings such as hospitals or schools and make them safer for future tsunamis. Previously, people with prosthetic hands were limited to just an open and close. So what does a hand need to do? It needs to be able to hold a pen, pick up a fork, zip up a zipper on a jacket. It has to be light. It has to be aesthetically pleasing. So how do we make this product smarter? And the answer is improved control between the body and the product. The important thing to me was shaking hands. A handshake should always be personal and now that is personal to me. So from working in a 1 in 50 scale tsunamis, the question is how can we make that bigger? And this is the answer. It's way bigger than the last one, which means we can have several buildings, we can model a small town, we can see how water is flowing between buildings. So making it bigger means that we can learn a lot more. In a nutshell, we take the model, we put it on the turntable in the tunnel, we've got the wind blowing across the sails, and then what we do is measure the forces. It's all about focusing on improving performance. Testing is extremely important. The results from these tests are very useful for our team to educate us for what we can improve on, what our next challenge is. At the moment, the wind speed is set to about a force five or six, which is about 30 miles an hour. But this wind tunnel is capable of going up to a hurricane strength wind force, sort of wind that will tear the roof off a house. Not just buildings that are destroyed, it's people's lives that are destroyed. But there's also a personal lesson in just being able to understand how important engineering is to try and solve these problems. It's very, very satisfying to be expert in some particular thing. And engineering can allow you to do that. You're getting involved in projects that allow you to pit your wits against physics and produce something that's better than somebody else can make. It's the wow factor every time I do something that I know I couldn't do before. It's like, yes, it's another. Tick. I'm Josh McAbrueg. I'm a structural engineer by background. My name's Martin Prince and I'm a principal engineer. My name is Courtney Medinsky. My name's Ted Varley. And we design products such as the B-Bionic Hand. I'm Tiziana Rosetto. I'm a professor in earthquake engineering. My name is Dick and Buckland and I'm a naval architect.